So hello, our weekly updates, August 9th, uh, AI updates uh, this week. Uh, not that busy as <laughs> usually, but still busy. And uh, first, uh, I want to talk about um, overall uh, prices and quality of the models. So I collected this slide. Uh, and what you can see here is that uh, on the first uh, place, uh, ranking number one of uh, LMC's leaderboard is uh, Google Gemini. And uh, the price is really, really low. So these are prices in uh, dollars per million tokens, uh, input, output. Or sometimes there is just one number, which is per million, regardless of the direction. And uh, so this is the first place. Uh, then uh, Anthropic Sonnet 3.5, rank number three, uh, is much more expensive. Uh, OpenAI, uh, uh, very interesting. The original 3.5, now it is on 59th place. It's actually, it's not even original. The, the, this is improved <laughs> like model. So um, we went a long way from the original models. The quality improved, uh, all the parameters in, improved. For example, context length grew from uh, four kilotokens to 128 kilotokens, or maybe 200 uh, kilotokens for Anthropic Sonnet, and million tokens for Google Gemini. <laughs> so models are really becoming much better, whereas prices continue to go down. And uh, so, uh, for example, GPT-4 originally was like 30 and $60. This is in and out per million tokens. In fact, back then the prices were listed not by million tokens, but uh, by thousand tokens. <laughs> um, okay, and uh, so now you see the GPT-40 and GPT-40 mini. Uh, their prices are lower, especially mini, but mini is ranked number three. So it's 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 really good model. Uh, now look in the middle, Meta Llama 3.1. And here I took the prices from together.ai. Uh, but it's also available from um, other like fireworks.ai, uh, Lepton, Hyperstack, uh, Grok. Uh, prices a little bit vary because uh, sometimes they limit uh, the input uh, context length or some other parameters, depending how you're using the model. Um, I would say together AI is the higher like price. But still, for 8B, it's low. For 70B, it's low, less than a dollar per, per, per million tokens. But the truth is, you don't even need to use them in the cloud because uh, you can just install them locally on your computer. Okay. Also, what's interesting, because Llama, uh, I mean Meta, uh, provided tools to fine-tune the models. Um, in fact, what happens, they trained uh, 405, the biggest model, and then they used it as a teacher for their smaller models. And they put it in the license like explicitly that uh, everybody can do that. So you can use their models to train your own custom models. So here, for example, uh, people fine-tuned uh, Llama 3.18b, and they got a result which is better than GPT-40, which is one of the top models, and at the same time, better quality and 25 times lower cost. So that's uh, the new world where uh, Llama started this open source movement and uh, fine tuning customizations. Now, here are some price cuts in just in the last uh, 30 days. And you can see 50%, 70 to 98%, 46%, 62%, 70, 90%. Uh, woo. Uh, so if you look at the leaderboard, if you look at uh, uh, place 17 or below, there is absolutely no reason to use these models because uh, you can find models better and cheaper in just the beginning of the leaderboard. Um, another interesting thing, OpenAI came up with uh, their latest model. Uh, you see it's August 6 with structured outputs. So when you're using it through API, you can say, uh, in the tool section, you can say strict, true. And what it means is when it generates output JSON, it 100% complies with uh, the format you require. And here, he, this graph shows the uh, progress from last year where it was 30 something percent and now it up to 100%. 
So models become more and more accurate in providing the output you want. And this, of course, is used in function calling, uh, structured outputs via tools available by setting strict. OK. Uh, next is, uh, I mentioned meta tools. So uh, if you follow the links here, there are multiple tools available for customizing, fine tuning, or using models in different kinds of applications. There are a lot of tutorials. Uh, so th this particular link is uh, for community support. This is this link. I just made a, a screenshot to show you even more links and what, what you can do. Uh, so th this is a universe uh, and, uh, well, quality of models is high. They're all absolutely free. And um, yeah, that's what we all sh should be doing. Uh, next is uh, Snapdragon uh, CPUs. Um, as you remember, uh, Qualcomm uh, is a company which produces chips for mobile devices. And they now released the chips for laptops. And uh, they're called Snapdragon. They uh, come in uh, variations. The best one is called Snapdragon X uh, Elite. and uh, Every manufacturer of laptops now pr producing these uh, Windows computers, they're really not expensive, somewhere between uh, $1,000 and $2,000. Uh, dollars and uh, also you can buy a small box uh, it's kind of like a uh, mac mini but this is windows box it costs 900 dollars and uh, yeah it, it, it's amazing so 900 dollars a small thing and you can easily run large language models let's say using alama high, high performance not expensive so you don't need a huge desktop you don't need to spend tens of thousands of dollars so uh, um, yeah, the, 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 this is a new world, and this has just happened uh, this summer. Um, so now we have MS Windows laptops, uh, which uh, can run uh, large language models. So it becomes uh, affordable and convenient. Uh, some miscellaneous news. Open AI executives are leaving. So these are three people who are leaving. Well, Greg Brockman is a very famous person. Uh, he uh, well, he's not uh, leaving completely. He just takes very long sabbatical. Uh, but uh, two others, which is Peter Deng and John Schulman, are leaving for good. And uh, John Schulman actually leaving to Anthropic, uh, which is um, a rival of OpenAI. Uh, figure two. Uh, so this is a startup which creates robots, and they created version two of uh, this robot. Uh, which is quite amazing. I recommend to watch this video, just really state-of-the-art arms, uh, how it moves. And it's powered by OpenAI uh, GPT-4. Uh, now, Gemini 1.5 Pro Experimental became number one on the leaderboard. So let me show it here. This is the top of the leaderboard. And it's still there. So if, if I click on the leaderboard, just just to show you yeah he, here it is experimental uh, from the the first of august and um, i try to find what people are saying why it happened why it took the first place because uh, the original gemini 1.5 uh, was uh, released in may uh, but it was not on the first place so what happened and uh, th there were several upgrades with the model uh, well, people saying that there is no one like uh, single reason why this happened, but there are multiple improvements uh, across various dimensions, including enhanced multilingual cap capabilities, bigger context uh, length, one million standard, uh, potential improvements in reasoning and coding. I personally think that when you improve multilingual capabilities, you train your model on uh, text uh, and facts from different languages, different cultures, and it kind of uh, compares them and it, it becomes better at understanding, I think. So anyway, uh, next, uh, the new model analyzes patient data, uses a smart algorithm to identify uh, crucial health markers, achieves 95% accuracy in predicting specific diseases like coronary artery disease, type 2 diabetes, and breast cancer. 95% accuracy. Amazing. Uh, Napkin. Uh, so this, this is the company, and uh, th th this is really fun because what, what they do, they uh, generate graphical presentation 
uh, from your texts. And uh, yeah, so you see all different texts uh, you, you you paste, and uh, the, the the result it is a beautiful presentation which you can use. I think maybe maybe I should start using it myself as well. Uh, so th this would be fun. Okay, uh, next, uh, Google DeepMind robot is playing ping pong. So th th this is the picture, but uh, here, if you actually go to this page, uh, you, you can see it actually playing. So th this is the robot. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and it, it's, it's winning against uh, amateurs. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> okay. Anyway, there are a lot of videos, so it, it, it's fun. Uh, I hope you can see it, how it plays. Um, anyway, um, AI Python for Beginners. Uh, this is from deeplearning.ai. Andrew Eng, they released uh, yet another course. Well, all their courses are good. Uh, Quen, uh, Quen 2 Math 72B. So Quen is a very good model from China. Uh, we used it, I used it for our, our work. And uh, uh, yeah, so now they, they released uh, a version which is specifically for m mathematics and uh, it uh, outperforms other model, it outperforms LAMA 31405B on a number of benchmarks. Uh, please mute yourself, who is not muted? Uh, right, so so th this is very interesting, and and and, th and this is the graph showing that there were a closed code model, and this is open source. So Quen is open source, so it's available for free. Uh, Seventy-two billion parameters. Microsoft GitHub models uh, provides access to a variety of AI models. Uh, it's powered by uh, Azure AI. So what's happening now when you go in uh, Visual Studio Code? or if you're using uh, GitHub code spaces, well, I don't recommend anybody, anyone to use <laughs> GitHub code spaces. I don't think it's a good idea. But, uh, well, if, if you do that, if your company does that, so now you have access to big list of models uh, and you can use them right there. Okay. Uh, Microsoft and Palantir partner to deliver advanced AI to US defense and intelligence agencies through classified cloud environments. So Palantir, Microsoft and uh, US Department of Defense. A uh, couple links, a visual guide for uh, quantization and more li links on quantization. I mean, a really nice work on explaining how the quantization works, highly recommend. Uh, AI agents, uh, well, with uh, Llama 3 releasing all the tools and models becoming better, uh, agents will become more and more practical. So AI agents, uh, they are autonomous systems which are supposed to interpret data from the environment. It may be text, images, sensors, whatever. Make decisions based on that data and which requires reasoning, decision-making, planning steps to achieve goals. And this is part uh, where most of the models are weak, but as models get better at reasoning and planning, so agents may become practical. And uh, finally, act to achieve set goals using uh, feedback, learning and adapting over time. So this is just definition of AI agent, but uh, the idea is that uh, it is a cycle inside and uh, there is reasoning and planning. So there are a couple of diagrams, which I copy pasted from the internet showing what uh, uh, agent is. So key components of an agent. So first of all, you're using a model, uh, needs best reasoning and planning. And uh, uh, maybe don't use local, use the best. So pay money, but you really need the best available model uh, for reasoning. Uh, prompt engineering, uh, you specify uh, for each agent or sub-agent role, goals, tools, constraints, and you can use some uh, function calling and use external APIs, uh, use some tools uh, to achieve whatever you need. Okay, implement the agent loop. For example, receive user input, analyze the input, use knowledge and history, decide what to do next, execute the chosen action, uh, eventually output to the user or to another agent. Okay, uh, who is not muted? Uh, Sander, I'll mute you. Okay, uh, next. Uh, I spoke to somebody and he asked if I worked with insurance companies. I haven't worked with insurance companies, uh, but I decided, well, if I would need to talk to insurance company, 
what can I offer them? And I asked, uh, I think it was Gemini, what possible AI projects can I recommend to an insurance company and ask to make a list. And this is uh, a little bit simplified uh, the response. Uh, the original response was longer, but it uh, shows uh, what you can offer, right? Uh, claims automation, underwriting optimization, customer service enhancements, and some additional areas telemarketing, marketing and sales, healthcare, uh, data availability, and so on. So e interesting, it's easy now to prepare for these conversations. Um, this slide, I, I showed it uh, several months ago, but uh, nothing changed much, so I, I just wanted to repeat it. That is when you're talking to clients uh, and they will want to use AI, there are multiple possible applications. Uh, so here I'm not talking about business, I'm just talking about, uh, well, general architecture, like for example, AI chatbot. Chatbot is a chatbot is a chatbot for different businesses, but they can serve different fu functions. And how you make chatbot, it's RAG, it's LLM, and uh, the most common examples is customer service or sales and so on. So th this is just this uh, u useful tables if, if you want to prepare to a conversation with a potential client. This is something you can use. Uh, the rise of the chief AI officer, just to remind you, this was again several months ago, but governments uh, are very, very serious now about uh, building their AI infrastructures and uh, creating laws. Okay, next is uh, CrowdSource Arena leaderboard. So these are the latest updates. Uh, so what do we see? Uh, Gemini 1.5 Pro is on the top and it is very cheap. So this is amazing. It's, uh, well, uh, there are several independent tests which say that um, actually is not as good at re as reasoning, but still people like it. And uh, okay, uh, GPT 4.0 and then Meta Llama 4.5B instruct, right? GPT 4.0 mini, this is amazing. Mini model with very fast response. So this is a substitute for what uh, we knew as uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is now on like 60th place. <laughs> but th th this is right there on the top, GPT 4.0 Mini, and it's quite affordable. Um, so yeah, Claude 3.5 Sonnet and uh, GPT 4 Turbo uh, and so on. Uh, just a reminder, Athene 70B, it's actually uh, Llama 70B, but uh, tuned a little bit. Um, okay, and then uh, these are for coding. So th this was for English queries and, and these are for coding and Claude 3.5 Sonnet still keeps uh, the, the first place. Okay, um, now about uh, layoffs. Uh, there were two major layoffs recently. So you see if you compare, uh, why it is here? It's supposed to be in August here. So, uh, uh, the blue is a uh, uh, number of companies who are doing layoffs and the red is number of people actually laid off. So you see in August 2023, this is the number of people laid off. And now in August, we already have more people laid off. What happened is that Intel and Dell both fired a lot of people. So Intel uh, fired 15%, uh, which is approximately 15,000 jobs. And uh, Dell also firing 10%, which is about 12 and a half thousand. They both say that this is restructuring because they're switching to using AI instead of people and uh, like uh, strongly restructure their companies. Uh, interesting. Okay, uh, this is me as usual and thank you.